This is a big deal. I mean, not physically, I mean, it's absolutely tiny, but this is to my knowledge, or at least to me, the first injection molded production brushless flywheel nerf blaster. This is the HC Diana and it was sent to me by Frontline Foam. I'll have a link down in the description if you want to purchase one. It showed up in a cardboard box that included the blaster with mag already in it, some instructions in a language I don't understand, and an Allen key with a tiny thumb screw. This is the original battery screw. I put the thumb screw in for reasons that will become apparent shortly. And yeah, 10 round, well technically 11, mag in grip 4S lipo powered flywheel blaster. It is absolutely tiny. It's got kind of a weird design. You can see it kind of taper off here at the end. It's got the thick part where the flywheels are. And then of course the muzzle of the blaster that has the barrel. And that's also where you store the battery. Take note of the position of the flywheels. That is important. It has built-in sights with the front post having a pip on it that is illuminated by an LED and kind of gives you a status of the blaster, which is a super cool design. You got a three position switch here on the right hand side, and you've got a two position position switch on the left hand side and a thumb activated mag release that is unfortunately kind of meant for right handed people so dual wielding this not impossible you can just use your trigger finger but it's a little bit more annoying than it needs to be the grip is incredibly thin for a mag and grip blaster it is very comfortable and has this very nice texturing on it that makes it feel like a real firearm it is incredibly good and is by far one of the best grips I've felt on a micro flywheel pistol like this. So we're gonna just plug that in. You're gonna hear it beep. And after that second series of beeps, your blaster is ready to go. As you might've noticed because the battery wasn't already in the blaster, there is absolutely no way to store the battery in this blaster and cut the power. Once you plug the battery in, the blaster is on and it's going to run until you remove the battery. If the blaster is idle for too long, it will start beeping, but it does not have auto shut off. That is a massive problem in my opinion, but some of you may not care. This very easy to manipulate, at least even with my small hands, is a three position select fire switch. So out of the box, this thing has a safe mode. It has a semi-auto mode. And then it has a full auto mode. Very nice. The other switch is a little bit different because right now this blaster is in standard mode and you might notice something. Let me just uh, see if you can figure this out. I'm gonna pull the trigger here. Yeah. There's a pretty hefty delay on that. Uh, it's not insurmountable, but it is not great. This little switch turns it into at least what Xbox Games called it because I handled his Diana first hot shot mode where the wheels the brushless flywheels are now currently perpetually spinning at a really low rpm so it's technically making a little bit of a whirring sound but now the trigger pull is essentially instant because all the wheels have to do is spin up really fast and then slow down they don't have to go from a complete stop all the way forward they're just perpetually always spinning and now it feels amazingly quick. And that is a really, really cool feature I have never seen before. And before we move on to the magazine and everything, what's wackier about this is yes, it is solenoid powered, so it feels really good. It doesn't have a lot of kickback, but it is a mechanical thing that is slamming back and forth and really gives this thing some character, is that you can change the semi-auto mode to a two shot or a three shot burst. The way you go about doing this is interesting to say the least. Unplug your battery, put the hot shot mode off or this switch forward, and then all the way back, so the safe position would be one shot. The middle position will be a two shot burst, and the forward position will be a three shot burst. So once you have it in whatever number you want to set, you hold the trigger down as you plug in your battery. And you're gonna hear it did that initial startup beep, but it didn't do the following beep until after I let go of the trigger. And now the blaster has replaced the semi-auto mode with a very quick three shot burst that feels absolutely lovely. That is a lot of tech packed into a brushless flywheel blaster that will run you $250, making it also one of the cheapest brushless blasters you can get your hands on. 
that's, that's beautiful. The magazine on the Diana is a proprietary magazine that does not work with any other blaster. I took this thing over to Freddy, my chronograph, to see exactly what velocity she's shooting out of the box, and I got anywhere from the mid 130s to high 140s, just about kissing 150 with Adventure Force Pro darts. This blaster did not come with any other dart, and that's a very typical velocity range for a single stage flywheel pistol. And I do want to point out the motors once again. If you noticed, the trigger is right below the motors. And that means that the entire motor system, including flywheel on this blaster, is located in this little spot. These metal pieces is the flywheel cage, and you can see the motors and the wheels spinning inside of it if you look into the holes at the top. Accuracy-wise, it's really nothing to write home about. It's a flywheel pistol. Short barrel, flywheels, you're pushing a foam dart between two diametrically spinning wheels. It's not going to be the most accurate thing ever, but if you need to hit somebody at close range or mag dump somebody at long range to ensure a tag, it works flawlessly for that, and it's also intended to be a sidearm. Or if you're like me and you really want to make sure that first trigger pull hits them, I would use the burst fire mode. Two darts is definitely better than one, and three, although that will burn through your ammo even faster, will give you more chances to hit your target with that initial draw and trigger pull. The first thing I want to test against the E-Shooter Century 2 physical targets is does that two-shot burst actually increase the chance of I'm going to hit the target with the first trigger pull? Okay. Yeah, that, that was that was really good. All right, and now against the actual target. Thirty. I was using the sights. Let's try that again. All right, swapping over to heavyweight worker darts. Historically, these are a bit better in things. Fifty-eight. One more try. All right. How about a mag dump? Forty-one. There's so much the Diana gets right, and one of the most important things is the build quality, because it's a brushless, nylon, very good-feeling blaster, and also the form factor. This thing is very compact. It feels amazing in the hand, especially compared to any other mag and grip blaster I've ever had. The magazine is incredibly good, and because it's a sidearm, you don't need to have too many of these. But good news is, if you want, you can kind of mangle worker nightingale mags to work in this thing, which I have done. I don't know if I recommend that, though. They are kind of wobbly, shaky, and not nearly as nice as these mags. It's just something you can do at a pinch using a jig that I found on Thingiverse that I'll link down below, or something you can consider if you have bulk Nightingale mags already, where you can convert them to work with another blaster and they will still work with all your existing ones. And the overall use of the Diana is excellent. As a sidearm, this thing is magnificent. As a sidearm, when you start trying to run it more like a primary flywheel compact blaster, things start to arise that cause problems. The first and most important, in my opinion, is the heat generation. This little metal part right here, that is the flywheel cage, also acts like a heat sink for those brushless motors, and this will get very hot very quickly. Burning hot very quickly. If you were to leave it against your skin, you will burn yourself if you've ran, uh, not too many darts through this thing. The trigger? It's not the greatest, to be honest. It has the same tension throughout. There's no definite click of when it's actually firing a dart. It pretty much, when it bottoms out or just before it bottoms out, you fire your darts, and that's not great for feel. And I personally don't like the minimum delay that you can get with the trigger sometimes if you're trying to rapid fire off semi-auto or burst shots as quickly as possible. There is a bit of a delay there, which isn't horrible by any means. In your first shot, especially in hotshot mode, is perfect. It's if you're trying to just rattle off, basically dump an entire mag and burst. Yeah, it, it doesn't really work as good as it should. And that is honestly my biggest complaint beyond all everything that ties together a lot of the faults of the Diana is that it is a brushless blaster. With all these amazing features, I expect to tune almost every single aspect of the blaster, especially for the $250 price tag. And you can't. You can't do any of that, which makes this blaster kind of feel like why is it a 
brushless blaster? The, the answer is because it's very nice, very high quality. But if you just need a decent sidearm, you can pick up multiple worker nightingales, in including full auto variants, for the price of this thing. You could dual wield, heck, you could almost triple wield full auto nightingales for the price of one of these and have several magazines to boot. And if you're just using them as sidearms, like, oh no, my blaster is jammed or I really need to get rid of a target point blank in front of me and not have to think about it, that's what a full auto worker nightingale will do. This is the race pistol version of that. Do you need it? No. But if you have the money and you watch this video and you want something that feels good, looks good, and more important, performs incredibly, that's where the Diana fits in. But when you compare the price to some other things, like, I don't know, the Pew Pew? Uh, yeah, this thing, you can buy two of these, dual wield them, and do all sorts of crazy stuff for the price of a Pew Pew. If you exclude all of the 3D printed variants, and there is a lot of them, is this the best pistol you can get? Kinda, sorta. Yeah, this is an immaculate blaster, but I do feel like if you're an adopter now, whenever, if ever, a Gen 2 comes out, it will be phenomenal. And that's where I'm gonna stick the Diana in my loadout. It is a phenomenal sidearm that is super high quality. I could drop it, I could do all sorts of things to it, and I would never have to worry. It's held up to hundreds of rounds so far flawlessly. Everything about this blaster feels great with minor exceptions to that trigger pull, which is completely overturned if you use the thing in full auto or if you're just not trying to rattle off an entire mag as fast as possible in semi-auto modes. But I can't get rid of that nagging feeling that this thing is far from perfect and has so much more room to grow.